everyone knows that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are the best new Pokemon games. And for me, I wanted a hard challenge for this new Pokemon experience. I decided to play with hardcore Nuzlocke rules and use only the new Paldea Pokemon released in Generation 9. Also, the Nuzlocke didn't end until I got through Area 0, the credits rolled, and I ripped my ears out to Ed Sheeran. This challenge was pretty crazy, and the game itself had a lot to offer. I hope you enjoy. After selecting the character that best resembles myself, we get thrown into a world of luxury. No more were the days of scrapping through the socioeconomic ladder or a pallet in Twin Leaf Town, but this time we have education and school uniforms. Whoa! I've never seen that one before. That thing is so ugly. Nintendo Switch. This one's got- Oh, it's the OLED display! Yo, nice product placement. Wonder how much it costs to put that one in there. And as Pokemon tradition, our mom is really hot. Come on, my, my family probably makes seven figures a year. And we got a dirty little squirrel in our house. Oh my gosh, dude. Oh my gosh, my mom is so hot. Then the school director conveniently shows up at my house. So I put on some drip and head out to meet the starters. Here, Pokemon, time to come out of your Pokeballs. Oh my gosh. We get introduced to the rival. I'm Nemona. That's such a weird name. Wanna be friends? No. And now it's time to see what group of starter enjoyers I get to make mad today. I'm going with my boy Fuecoco. This nickname gets us places. This starter pick was actually mostly strategic. Paldea doesn't have many fire types, and the first two gyms are both weak to fire. This line is also the bulkiest, which is great because I'm not going to be doing many damage calculations. My rival makes the brightest decision of taking the starter that is weak to mine, leaving Quaxley with no trainer and nobody to love them. And since I learned Ember at level 5, the first fight was a breeze. For encounters, we actually have a good amount of these. There's a lot of med locations. For reference, by the end of the Nuzlocke, I had about a full box. As for catching the first Pokemon at every route, I find it's kind of hard as Pokemon are sparsed out. Most people just spin a wheel, but for me I'll just be picking whatever Paldea Pokemon I see. And this starts with a static Lechonk. This Pokemon is pretty bad. Its evolution only has a 489 base stat total, but it does evolve at level 18, making it useful early on. It's more comparable to something like Furret or Babarel. You can head this way later. Dude! <laughs> Night. <laughs> My first day of school gets even more crazy when I find a Coridon washed up on the shore. Feeling the need to help it out, I jump down with my Rotom Parachute. Hopefully I can get one of these in the future. Then I reluctantly feed it the sandwich my mom packed for me. I'm gonna be very hungry on my first day. I follow Coridon into a cave and I was about to wipe to Houndoom until it came to my rescue. We run into a weirdly haired man named Arvin who we learn to be the professor's son. He also has some form of connection to Coridon that we'll learn about later. In South Province Area 1, I find a Wiglet. I don't know much about this thing. What is happening to the Pokeball? Wait, whoa, 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 what? What? <laughs> This is a pretty flaccid physical water type, though its stats don't have much girth. For most of the run, I'll keep this chub tucked away in my box. There wasn't any encounters that I found in Inlet Grotto, so I allowed myself to catch a Wooper as well. I won't do this for all places, but because it was early on, I allowed it. And come on, how could I pass up this guy? Apparently, we can just show up to school at any time we want, so we can check out the new Pokemon Center. And Nurse Joy oddly looks really hot in this game. There are trainers in each area, but they are all optional, so I won't be fighting many of them. We finally get to the school's entrance and get introduced to Terastalizing. This is something that will be very helpful, especially for defensive type pivoting. And there it is, Terastalization. Oh, okay. That animation is actually really nice. I can't lie. Just as I thought I'd make it to first period on time, we get introduced to Team Star. They try recruiting me to their club. Apparently they are an organization who skips school, steals government money, and makes friends. Sounds pretty enjoyable, and I might want to join them, but more on that later. We've got a quota we're supposed to fill for our new members. Oh my gosh, they're advertising their school club.
I finally make it to school, granted I was hours late to my first day, and a lack of a bus stop meant that I had two ACL injuries, but I was finally able to get an overly wholesome welcome from my classmates. Oh, it's class time! Dude. <laughs> the feet, dude. The feet! The feet! <laughs> the feet! You wanna talk to me? <laughs> this, they're acting like I'm a celebrity! Apparently my teacher had enough and left, so I get to explore a little bit. And after running into the champion of the region, my rival challenges me to reach challenger rank, something gained after getting 8 badges and defeating the Elite Four. We are also greeted by Arvin in the cafeteria, and he shares his desire to find herbs and make Pokemon stronger, but they are guarded by strong titans and he needs our help. And just as I'm about to leave the cafe, my phone gets hacked by someone talking about a grand scheme to take down Team Star. And if you don't want your phone to get hacked or your information to get leaked, you can Just kidding. This introduces the three storylines that each have their diverging boss fights. We also get introduced to Professor Sada. <laughs> Hello. 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 Who, for some reason, is in Area Zero, the place where all the storylines will converge for a grand finale. I'm going to be battling the bosses from each storyline in order of levels and capping for each one. Just as I'm settling in and enjoying my new class. Interested in any classes? Battle studies. Thanks! I didn't know that! <laughs> Especially your Pokemon! It's way to the other move. We learned that the school is useless and we'll just forget everything that we learned anyways. So our school has the bright idea of letting all of us 10 year olds into the wild to seek treasure or whatever that means to us. Gone were the days that we were shackled by school bells, chores, and mandatory tutoring. But now we get to meet strangers and violently fight wild monsters. I hope we have insurance for this. So, okay, this is, this is interesting. The girl, our rival, she wants us to fight the gyms. This guy wants us to fight the titan. And then this guy wants us to fight Team Star. First up is the Bug Gym with a level cap of 15. We have a good amount of encounters beforehand though. In South Province Area 2, we get a Mass Chief. This Dark type has great attack and pretty good stats, though it won't evolve for a bit. And unfortunately, I didn't get Intimidate on it. But I'll get a new ability that boosts the Pokemon stat if it's intimidated. And look at this little guy. On my first exploration, we also get introduced to Terror Rates. These are a great asset for EXP, though I won't be doing many of them for a while. Yeah, you can attack your teammates. Like, like, I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to kill this Magnemite, bro. Oh, I died. <laughs> you got lucky. Wait, I did- <laughs> Glowing Wild Pokemon also have unique terror types, but I never was able to get one of them as my encounter. Oh, uh, excuse me? Oh, no. It's okay. This thing has run away. Oh, gosh. Chill, 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 chill. Oh, my gosh. Run away. Huge. We also travel to West Province Area 1 where I find a Fido. This fairy type Pokemon has great physical bulk and its ability boosts its defense stats sharply if hit by a fire move, but there's not much else going for it. With that, I have a full team of six and I'm feeling confident enough to take on the gym. Expecting just a small puzzle and a couple of gym trainers, I was surprised to find out that we now have gym tests. These challenges vary a lot per gym, and we start off with one of the weirdest festival activities I've ever seen. The sounds are, the sounds are so whack, dude. Get in there. Yay, we did it. After the trial, I met with our first boss, Katie, and her bug types. I've underestimated this, for, perhaps. Okay. Easy. That thing's weak. Oh, it's it's terror type Teddy Ursa, isn't it? Oh, okay. That makes sense. Got the remix of the Gen 8 theme? Okay. A little scuffed version of it? Oh my gosh, wait, chill. Chill, chill, chill. Okay, two times. Oh, okay. That's scary. If my Foy Coco dies right here, I'm gonna be so sad. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. That was scary. That was scary. We got pretty build there, and this was a wake up call for what's to come. Thinking this game would be a pushover that a mere toddler could beat would be a huge understatement. Best seen by the first Titan fight. We head east to South Province Area 3 and catch a Nackley. This rock type Pokemon is fantastic. It's very bulky and its ability will protect it from status conditions and it will resist ghost moves. Am I dead to crit? I don't think so. Oh my gosh. Wait, I can't switch? Wait, run, 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 run. I'm gonna die. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. What is it, the timer runs out? Wait, <laughs> can we timer stall him? Wait. 
I'm gonna use the bathroom. I'll be right back. Hey guys! <laughs> Wait, this timer stall strat is clutch, dude. Wait, what?! The game heals you if you wait? It better heal me. Wait, it already died? <laughs> well, I guess that's the first death. Good Reddit Sofido, am I right? The first tie in is Cloth, a Pokemon that essentially gains Shell Smash if its HPs drop below half. Pretty insane early on. That is terrifying. I see, you got a fighting move. Okay. Now we just gotta kill. Wait, Trastalize. Oh my gosh. We got this. We got this. Come on. Yeah, that's a good Wigglet. Come on. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. You suck! <laughs> You're so bad! Oh yeah, all Italians also have two phases. Once you get it low enough, it will run off and you go to phase two with Arvin helping you out. Ah! Oh! Yes! <laughs> Easy! Easy! Let's go! <laughs> that was a nail biter, bro. The mud slaps came in clutch. Even though Wiglet is terrible, it's proven that it's a valuable asset to the team. We learned that it's these mystical herbs that are giving the Titans their power, and we could harness this energy to upgrade Coridon, regaining its power each time we get a new ability, like being able to jump, sprint, or swim. Next stop is the Grass Gym, but before that I'm able to catch an Electrotype Tad Bulb in South Province Area 4. This turns into a bulky mod with an ability that boosts electric moves when taking damage. Pretty good. The next gym test requires me to go around town and find some Flores. Oh my gosh, we got the Arby! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, dude, this is far-fetched all over again. The leader led with Petalo that deceptively was pretty strong. What you got? <laughs> Mabasa finished it off, and then we stayed in to take out Smoliv. Never worried. Last was Sudo Wudo, who seemed really strong for my team. It had stab, rock, and grass moves now because of terrestrialization. So, with a jerk reaction, I decided to finish off my least valuable member. I'm sacking this. 100%. Wigglet is so bad. It's a funny looking Pokemon, but dude, it is so bad. What the? Oh my gosh! Come on. Don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die. Oh! 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 It's too easy! It's too easy! It's too easy! <laughs> Don't crit. Yes! <laughs> That's insane! The hard decision to sacrifice Wiglet proved to save the run, and no matter how far I get, I'll be forever grateful for its sacrifice. Now the level cap jumps to 24, and we have a lot to do. I catch a Caps Kid in West Province. This turns into the first ever Fire Grass type, and it gets Chlorophyll. It also hits really hard. We evolve Lechonk into Oinkaloin and Wooper into Clodzire. Then I find a Thunderstone on a tower and evolve my Tadpole. I also am able to catch a new Pokemon in South Province Area 5, which is just a Flamingo? Don't let looks deceive you. This Pokemon hits very hard and has great typing. I'm also able to get a Paldean Tauros in East Province Area 1. There's actually three new forms, Fighting Type, Fighting Fire, and Fighting Water all with the same abilities and stats. Unfortunately, I got the worst typing and not Intimidate, but it's still pretty good. After maneuvering through some giant rocks like Indiana Jones, we get to the second tie-in Bombrier, though this one is a lot easier. Bombrier is a flying dark type that has a cool ability that gives it stab on rock moves. We also learned that Arvin's main goal is to heal up his Mabostiff, who was badly injured in Area Zero, the center of Paldea. 
so we start giving him and Karide on the herbs. On my way to the first team starbase, we are greeted by Elton John, I mean this guy named Clive, who conveniently looks like he's 50 years old, but he's also a student apparently? Seems like he has some type of connection to Team Star and wants to join us in our Operation Starfall. This is our amazing name for our grand plan to take down the organization. The first phase of the operation starts with raiding the Dark Type base and doing one of the dumbest mini games I have ever seen. The game gives you way too much time to defeat 30 Pokemon by merely clicking the R button. We are then challenged by Giacomo. Wait, I have to fight the car? All the Team Star bosses have a terraform of Reviver, with the type according to their theme. We learned that he used to be the student council president, but everyone hated him because of it. We shut down the base and move on to the next gym. I also caught a Tinkatink and a Terror Raid, a steel fairy type that doesn't get the greatest stats, but learns Gigaton Hammer, a 160 base power steel move that only has the drawback of not being able to use it consecutively. I also got a kill a watch roll, a flying electric type with Volt Absorb or the new ability Wind Absorb. It's really fast but doesn't have the greatest bulk. And lastly I got Palafin, who gets the ability Zero to Hero. Basically if you switch this Pokemon out with something like Flip Turn, it turns into a 670 base stat beast. This will be one of my best Pokemon. Next up is Iono with her electric types, but first my pesky rival wanted to fight. But her team is still pretty bad for now, especially because she chose the ugly cat. Next, I get to do an amazing collab with Iono where we play hide and seek. The gym was pretty tough and to make it worse, I had the pressure of fighting in front of a live audience. In front of a live audience, in front of a YouTube audience. Yeah, I'm talking to you guys. Yeah, you guys are the bottom of the barrel. I had a nice start of setting up Tasa Spikes and knocking out Watch Roll. Then I sawed out the Belly Bolt with my own as I used Slack Off. But the Mismachius being immune to T-Spikes and having Charge Beam and Hex meant that I didn't have a great answer. I also wasted my Terra forgetting they would turn into an Electro-type. I shouldn't be dead to crit here. Oh my gosh. One. Nice! Okay. Nice! Oh, wait. Bro, come on! Oh, I'm on tempo! Let's go! Go for it. Okay, we're good. Ow! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on! You got it, you got it, buddy, come on. You got it, buddy, you got it, buddy. Yes! Okay. Beat that, beat that, come on, beat that. Come on, man. No crit, nice, no crit. Come on, just get it off, just get it off. If we get this off, we're good. Nice! That's what we like to see. <sighs> that was way too scary, man. Is she okay? <laughs> Out of all my fun viral stream moments, this definitely takes the cake. Fortunately for me, Stab Hex had slightly higher base power than Stab Charge Beam. That could have been really bad. Next on the agenda was the Star Fire Base, but before then I caught a Varum in East Province Area 3. Though his typing is really unique and thematically cool, Poison brings it down a bit. But come on, it's a freaking car Pokemon. Sadly, all the team Star Bases follow the same pattern. Fight some grunts at the entrance. Do an insanely easy auto battling mini game. Guys, I only have nine minutes left. Oh no. Then fight another boss with the same Reverb Room with a different terror type. Though I will say the boss's designs are pretty unique, and the boss fights themselves can be pretty tough. This one led with a Drought Torkoal that did a lot of damage to my Kilowatch roll, but my Knackle Stack got a clutch Salt Cure as I got screeched. Okay, does Yawn work on this? Does anyone know? It does work? Okay, easy. Wait, what? <laughs> Come on! But the healing from Belly Bolt and pivoting after screeches let me whittle the car down until it fainted. Next, we had the Steel Titan. After a confusing puzzle, I am clearly missing something. All right, how about I just put this guy right here? He stays there, and then I go trigger this. Bro, you're supposed to stay there. We easily took it down. 
So Cryodon can now jump a bit higher, Mabasip gets a little more healthy, and we make our way to the water gym. We also catch Orthworm in the desert. This is a pretty average physically bulky steel type, though its ability is amazing as it heals itself from ground moves, giving it great matchups into many Pokemon. Our gym test this time is to chase down this goofy looking guy as he runs to the Porto Miranatus auction without his wallet. Unfortunately, there wasn't an option to just steal his money, so I go return it to him while catching a Cyclozar on the way. This dragon normal type gets an OP move in Shetil, which cuts its HP in half, but pivots out to give a substitute into whatever you switch in. I meet Walmart Santa just as the auction is starting, and he tasks me with betting his own money on a rare farm of seaweed. Not sure why he thinks this would make me worthy of challenging him, but oh well. I spend $35,000 on the overpriced treat, and then I pocket the rest of his retirement fund. Going into this battle, I'm feeling pretty confident on my team and my type matchups. Up until this point, I haven't been looking at what bosses have, and I won't do this until the Elite Four. He just so happens to lead with a Veluza, a part psychic type that would one-shot my Clodsire when I wanted to set up Tox Spikes. Veluza. Might be able to just kill it. I think I could just kill it with Kilowattrol. I'm just gonna go for it. Come on, kill it. No! Oh, it's Aqua Cutter, that's why. I revenge kill with Cyclozar and go into Clodsire to set up Toxic Spikes. I put the Lugtrio to sleep, then go to Skullvillain to set up Sun. We kill Lugtrio, but a scary Curvomitable comes out. But it was no match for my Belly Bolt. Kilowattro wasn't the best mod, so I'm okay with it dying. I catch a Bombardier in West Paldean Sea, and a Primeape in West Province Area 3. Which isn't itself a new Pokemon, but its evolution is really good. It's a Ghost Fighting type with Rage Fist, which increases its power by 50 each time you get hit. Wait, look at the mini map. Wait, I want that thing, wherever that is. Wait, is that it? This, is this thing good? Oh, wait, that's the pre-evo Grimmsnarl. <laughs> Oops. This new tentacle form is Grass Ground and gets Spore. Though its ability Mycelium Might forces status moves used by the Pokemon to have negative priority. We have another typical Team Star raid, except this time the boss was way harder. The lead Skuntank did a lot of damage to Orthworm, and Muck nearly killed Cyclozar. Bellybolt was able to handle it, and I got a para on the Reverberum, but I still didn't outspeed it. No! Oh, oh it's still. What? Huh? How did I not outspeed? Are you serious, dude? Okay, this will outspeed, though. This will outspeed. Jesus, dude. Speed harshly fell. That's good. It's minus six speed now. I just need one more. I might kill, and I and I might live. Oh my gosh. Okay. Some of these bosses just become super hard out of nowhere. This is something that I love about these new games. I'm trying my best to play as well as I can, and I'm still struggling. And we are just getting started. If you're wondering about the story behind Team Star so far, basically every member gives us a little backstory about how they joined Team Star, how they love their friendship within the group, and how they regret being such a bully after we defeat them while we disband their base. Clive also has an unknown motive for joining Operation Starfall, and Cassiopeia warns us that the top chief of Team Star will have to show themselves soon if all their bases go out of operation. Oh yeah, and Penny just shows up out of nowhere giving us money whenever we take down a base. Kinda weird. Heck yeah. Boost the user's special attack? Huh? This move is broken. We also get to evolve Primeape with a weird evolution method of using Rage Fist 20 times on wild Pokemon and then leveling it up. Scarlet and Violet surely does have no shortage of weird evolution methods. We arrive in Medali and go to fight the gym, until we are introduced by our rival insisting that we fight, but I'm able to delay it for XP purposes. This gym puzzle was the hardest one yet. Basically, you have to battle and talk to some trainers to give you clues to order a specific menu item, or you can just have your chat tell you. The gym leader was my favorite, a hardworking man with nice hair and could cook well, and he oddly resembles a certain Hoenn gym leader. I mean, they are both the normal type, both the fifth gym leader have nice eyebrows, and are exactly 37 years of age. The fight was pretty simple. I set up Tasa Spikes, salt out the Kamala with my salts. He's got the d dunsparce What is the d dunsparce Oh shoot! Oh jeez! And then easily walled it with Orthworm. 
and last was a scary Staraptor. Nice show, man. Good job. Oh my gosh, get out of my face. But a pivot into Juicer was too much for it to handle. Finally, a clean gym fight. But without being able to switch my team, Pneumonia wanted a piece of the action. But with Tasa Spikes, it was no issue. <gasps> oh, shoot! Oh, hello! This cafe is also the location of changing your Terra type, and it just so happens that we get a free Terra normal from this gym. And we have a ghost type gym next, so I put it on Annihilate. For my encounter in Glaciato Malin, I'm looking for a Frigabax that turns into the new pseudo legend. Katsugiri, hello. I should not be here. Okay, give me out, 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 give me out. Heck yeah. Frigabax. I also catch a Satoddle, which turns into a very bulky ice type, and Dunsparce, which turns to bigger Dunsparce. Let's go! Dun 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 Dunsparce. Yeah, that's true. Heck yeah. What the? The user swings his whole body around, uh, it can't move. Oh, it's so, so it's like Giga Impact. It's- oh, it's Self Torment? Wait, that's insane. The ghost gym was interesting. For the gym test, I was the opening act for a live concert. I'm kind of surprised anyone would show up to an outdoor concert in this type of weather. I wouldn't blame them if it was someone like Jake Paul performing, but I digress. Oh, whoa, 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 I didn't know it was like that. Okay. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> what was that? Who was... What the? Who is this? You want to end my reign? Yeah, keep dreaming. Buy a book of rhymes, kid, and start dreaming. <sighs> or reading, sorry. <laughs> I'm done, you won! <laughs> my attack rose, and my defense, and my special attack, and my spinef. I literally just got an omni boost from the crowd. Nice sucker punch, by the way. There's no way I get another Omni boost, right? There's no way. <laughs> hey, he's jamming! Look at him! Oh my gosh! Whoa, whoa, whoa! The script flipped. Oh my gosh! Now the Houndstone has an Omni boost. Things just got real, bro. Oh yeah, I still had sped. Okay, nice. Oh shoot! Okay, no, that was on Annihilate. We're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Like, Actually, a lot harder. Alright, GG's. I then got Pommon, an electric fighting type with Revival Blessing, a move that completely revives a teammate. Kind of insane. I also get Espartha, a psychic type with Illumina Crash, a move that lowers your target's spadef by two stages and has 80 base power. In South Province Area 6, I was able to evolve my Finizen by leveling up in multiplayer. Yes, that is the actual evolution method. I am Nuzlocking. I'm gonna end your Nuzlocke right now, bro. Yes! Yes! Oh, this is so good. Oh my gosh, this is so good. We had another tie-in, but this one looked suspiciously different than a Dawn fan. Sada informs us that it came from the great creator of Paldea. Phase 1 was easy, as Espartha did massive damage, so the extra terror boost should be enough to get through Phase 2, right? Okay, just don't kill me. Fell. Oh! Wait, a stand up? Oh no. No! No! I didn't like that bird anyway. With the new herb, Keratin can now glide. The puppy gets a little healthier, and it's time for the psychic gym. But guess who was waiting for me? Pneumonia finally was able to evolve their starter, but it was no match for Cock Juicer. The gym test was some weird form of DDR that I still don't understand. Do I spam it? I think I spam it. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm happy. I'm very happy. Oh shoot. That's scary. Oh shoot. Oh my gosh. Back to the million. Okay. The gym leader is a makeup artist, someone who I wish could have gave the last gym leader some advice, but we set up stealth rocks and didn't have any issues. We go next to the 8th gym where there's a much better gym test. Ah, okay. Oh, this is hard. Oh, jeez. No! I missed one. Oh, it ruins the time. Okay, we're fine though. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. 
Okay. <laughs> I wish it was longer and you had less time, but oh well. I take it you're a challenger. <laughs> that messes with things. Freeze. Okay, nice. This is the eighth gym. Oh, shoot! It's too free, baby. It's too free. Let's go! Now with eight badges, we can finally take on the Pokemon League. But first, we have a lot of plot holes to fill. I got Veluza, a psychic water type with pretty bad speed, and North Valdean Sea, Bramblegast, a hard-hitting ghost type, and Sakurat Trail, Gimme Ghoul that turns into an amazing steel ghost type, though you have to get 999 coins from various towers to evolve it, which will take a while, and King Gambit, a bulkier and stronger yet slower evolution of Bisharp that gets a signature move called Kotal Cleave, and its ability boosts your attack by 10% for every party member that fainted. The fairy type team starbase raid was a complete pushover, so we can go to the final Titan fight. Titan. What? Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! Okay. Oh, we're fighting now. We always hit this. Easy. Oh, huge tail whip. Now it dies. Easy. Huh? Does that thing want to fight too? Huh? Crazy. Oh, you're insane. Read it kind of popped off, can't lie. With that, Coridon regains full strength and Arvin shares a special moment with Babastiff. It's finally able to move again. Our next stop is the last Team Star base. This one is Fighting Type, something I have pretty good stuff for. And this clown isn't gonna stop me. So sorry. I really appreciate the five gifted. It means a lot. I have four things weak to Ghost. Dude, I might lose here actually. I think I'm just gonna sack when you go. Oh god. Okay, plus two at least. Nice. Alright, now the question is do I stay in the game too far? Oh gosh! Oh shoot! Oh, oh god! Come on, just fighting move, fighting move, fighting move. No! <laughs> ah! Okay. Don't die! Don't die! What is that? Yes! Okay, come on, kill it. These Team Star bosses have been surprisingly hard, but now that all the bosses are disbanded, it's time for the real boss to step up and save their school club. But first we have the classic Elite Four. A few things to note are you technically can switch your team in between members, but I won't allow that. In this game, each species gives XP to every member in your party and it's impossible to turn it off, giving each of your team members 2-3 to three levels before the end. Some members also have common weaknesses, like Rika, who has a big grass and water weakness without having great coverage. <laughs> Poppy getting absolutely blasted by fire attacks, and Hassel having no answers for dragon moves. Before the fights though, we have to pass an interview. I'm gonna get tested? The name of the school you're enrolled in? <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> I think it was this one. Which of the eight gyms gave you the most difficulty? I'll just say the first one. What was the name of the gym leader? Dude, I don't know! <laughs> Regarding the results... I didn't pass? Oh no. Thankfully, after some Quizlet studying, I was able to retake it. First fight was against Rika. I flipped turn with Palafin to activate hero mode for later, and then I went to Bramblegast to knock out Whiskash. The rest of the fight was pretty simple, only needing three Pokemon. It can't switch you either because it's programmed to not send in the ace. Dead. The next one was also pretty simple. I just clicked Flame for you. And it dies. 
bop, see ya. <laughs> the mag zone has sturdy, so I don't want to stay in against me. Keen off of 200, that's insane. Okay, cool. This is dead. Last is Tinkaton. Yeah. Alright, Poppy's dead. Remember the Norman guy from earlier? Apparently he's an Elite Four member too. No wonder he looks so tired all the time with all these jobs. He was also the hardest member. I flip turned on the Tropius as a setup sun, but it was no worry because Scarf Ice Beam Excalibur was able to outspeed even through Chlorophyll. That made it close combat from Staraptor, so I went to Claude's Ire. Then I went back to Baxcalibur on a Brave Bird, and the Spadef drop meant that it was now dead to Ice Beam. That baited Altaria, who also died to Scarf Ice Beam. Reminder that I know how the Switch AI logic works. Oricario used Teterance on my Switch, which was a little awkward. Um, I do have Lumberry, but if he does that twist in a row, it could be troublesome. Oh god. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Easy. I was able to bait a close combat into my Orthburn switch. It also had a Chopper Berry in case this happened. It should click close combat again. Beautiful. So beautiful. So clean. Dead. Super clean. I knew everything what was going to happen in that fight. The last guy had a pretty scary team, but it was actually the easiest. Uh, does that kill? Yeah, it kills. Nice. Yep. Dead. Who's next? Yep. Who's, who's next? Haxorus? I think I get a handle of Haxorus. See ya. See ya. GG. Ha <laughs> ha! And that's the dragon type guy. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's literally it. And all that was left was the champion. She had a pretty scary team, but she can't really make use of her ace's ability that sets up T-spikes on contact because the AI always sends in their ace last. Nice. Beautiful. Alright, I got a hit, a 95% accurate steel beam. If I miss this, it's getting, this gets pretty awkward. Nice. Let's go. Dead. That's a special move, by the way. Wait, I didn't realize it was going to come my HP. Oh god, wait, this is awkward. <laughs> don't drop, 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 no! Ah, oh, shoot! Okay, I don't know if I die. I really don't know. <laughs> okay, wait, technically I wasn't dead to crit. If I got crit, I would have been on 1 HP, right? Alright, this is... this was the hardest part of this fight. Wait, I forgot about this thing's ability. Oh no. This is all falling apart! Oh god. I literally forgot about this thing's ability, and now I can't pivot through Orthworm. Oh jeez, I have to dodge crit now. Unless I want to sack Bramble Blast. Just sack? I don't want to sack though, there's like five fights after this. I'm just gonna go into the Excalibur and hope I'm okay. Oh! I guess it saw kill with Stone Edge too. I should have took that into account. What the heck, man? What the heck? Wait, it's raining? Wait, 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 wait. Is it raining? Oh no. It's raining? It just happened to rain on this day? Are you serious? Wait, it's gone! <laughs> it's gone! Okay, wait, we gotta do this before the rain comes back. Go, 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 go. Okay, I got a, I got a, I got an insane strat, guys. I got an insane strat. You know how my, uh, Orthoworm took damage, right? From the Steel Beam? I didn't know Steel Beam cut my HP in half. It's gonna Terrastalize and use Terra Blast. What?! I don't know why it did that, dude! That's a lot of damage. <laughs> oh, this champion's stupid! <laughs> why use his weakest move on me? I am now the champion. 
Woohoo, we beat the champion, but we have bigger matters to face. The boss of Team Star reported to be at the entrance of the school, and it's time for a showdown. We meet Clive at the school's entrance, and he reveals himself to be the professor. It makes sense since he wanted Team Star to fall as it was messing with his organization, but he also reveals to be the leader of Team Star, which just makes no sense. But he's determined to take me down and challenges me to a fight. Oranguru went down to Mabastif, then I baited in Obama Stone and used Taunt to prevent Aurora Bill. I don't know if this kills. I hope it does. It should. <gasps> oh no! Ah! I also forgot that in this gen, Snow actually boosts defense. Don't kill my puppy, bro. Oh god. Oh god. Okay, we're good. I need to dodge a burn. If I don't dodge a burn, we're gonna have a death. Yes! We're chilling. Let's go. Beautiful Will Wisp. Let's go. You're dead. Wait, you're not dead. That's fine. Alright, two left. This should be a Moongus coming in. This Quaquaville. Quaquaville. This thing is so ugly! Oh my gosh, this starter is terrible! Terra? Oh, this thing's Torrents. That's why I did so much. Okay, rest in peace. I think I need to dodge a crit on a high level. Honestly. It started raining? Wait. No, no, don't tell me. Oh my gosh, dude. It literally just started raining, and I would have died to crit. I would have died to crit because of the rain. Gotta love Gen 9 mechanics. We learned that Clawville was actually just pulling a prank on us, and actually knows where the real Team Star boss is. And they were just testing us to see if we had the guts to beat them. Turns out the innocent looking Eevee backpack wearer was actually running the show the entire time. The battle was pretty underwhelming as she had 6 Eevee Lucians without great coverage. Nice. This should be Flareon coming in. Oh, that just killed. <laughs> I thought I was going to be able to recover. It turns out Penny actually wanted Team Star to disband and for all the members to go back to school for their safety. Then Penny for some reason self-reports by telling the professor that she stole government funds. So as punishment for running a criminal organization, stealing Pokemon, bullying kids, and stealing government funds, they get a harsh punishment of getting to run a new school club. Nice one. Now we gotta go meet up with Arvin and he tells me about how he's never seen his mom. And he's had a nobody but his dog to give him love. And right on cue, we get a video message saying she needs him to go to the center of Paldea, as all Arvin ever was to his mom was a pawn for her Pokemon research. Trash is empty. Classic. Classic text. Too heavy to open? Okay, he definitely has a dead body in here. He definitely has a dead body in here. I'm convinced. So Arvin challenges me to a fight to see if I'm ready to go to Area Zero, and it went just about how you expected. Okay, sweet. But before we go to Area Zero, I have unfinished business with my rival. Even though we beat the Elite Four, Pneumonia is considered the top ranked student who herself has been in the league before me. And apparently in all our fights previously, she's been holding back her true potential. Her team this time around was a lot better. I think I helped teach you the tight matchups. <laughs> yeah, the tight matchups. That's the difference here. Wait, what? Oh no, oh, this is bad. Wait, 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 do I outspeed this? Wait, 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 wait. I wanted to then ship the Claude's Eyre so I can pivot through Orthworm back to Annihilate so I'd catch the Dunsparce like the original plan, but. This might work. This might work. Oh, it's going for Ghost Combat. It's a random move. Shoot, I thought it was going to Ice Punch. Oh, God. Oh, 
Okay. I pivoted through Annihilate, then to Skeletor, should kill with Flamethrower. I have to dodge an Ice Beam Freeze. If I don't, it gets kind of awkward. Okay. Having Annihilate Bow was crucial as I didn't want to Dunsparce to Coil. Holy moly. Yeah, this thing dies. Easily. I should have speed too. <gasps> Wait, no Drasselize! No! No, 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 no! <laughs> I don't wanna look! I'm so dumb! Why did I just switch? the content. Yep. Annihilate's like my best book. I don't have another ghost type. I don't have a better another fighting type. I was pretty upset at that mistake, but we have no time to waste as the final stretch of the game needed our full attention. It was time for Area Zero, the place where supposedly Coradon was from. Me, Arvin, Pneumonia, and Penny were tasked to meet Professor Sada in the depths of Area Zero. Coradon was a bit scary and the professor oddly sounded like a robot. This music, bro, what is happening? What? This is insane! This is so epic. But we were able to trek through and find an abandoned research station. Kinda ominous. We need to enable four of them to get to the professor. We are greeted by something that looks oddly familiar to a Jigglypuff. We learn that these Pokemon are from the distant past, and they come from a time machine where Sada is at. And then Arvin gives me a Scarlet book, a book made by Sada about everything going on here. Oh, oh, oh god, dude. <laughs> that thing scared me so bad. <laughs> We also run into Great Tusk, suggesting that the Titan we saw earlier may have came from the time machine. We also learned that Karadon came from here, and Cyclozar is actually the present form of it. Oh shoot. Oh, oh, oh. Put him on skates. Oh, oh, oh. Again. The locks have all been disabled at last. Please make your way to the Zero Lab. Uh, seems normal to me. Everything is normal. Everything about this place, everything the professor was saying, everything is normal. We find out that there's actually a second Karayon who isn't very friendly, and we have to fight off all the Paradox Mons who escaped. The final fight of the Nuzlocke is very tough. All of the Paradox Mons have very good base stats, and this took a lot of planning. so confused on what's happening, dude. The real professor passed away during the incident that destroyed research station number four? The professor's dead? That's why she threw herself in front of your Coridon in an attempt to protect it. <gasps> I have one last thing to do here at the Zero Lab. I desire your help. In short, I wish you to put a stop to the time machine the original professor created. The original professor no longer exists. I'm afraid that this fact may be difficult for her son Arvin to accept. This makes so much sense now. At present, the barrier around Area Zero is still working to keep the ancient Pokemon from escaping into the rest of Paldea. Final freaking battle, man. What? This is the time machine we perfected using the power of the terrestrial phenomenon. This is it. If you place the Scarlet Book upon the pedestal here, you'll be able to stop the time machine. If you try to stop the time machine, I will most likely attack you. I'm afraid I'll become no more than a battle machine. Having seen the bond between you and your Pokemon Hover, I believe you can prevail. <laughs> That's so ominous, knowing that she's just gonna turn evil. Please defeat me. There's a lot at stake here. The Nuzlocke, the world, the professor. Oh, here we go. What is this? Flip turn, let's go. Get out of here. Lunge is fine. The power of the ancient past is splendid, isn't it? It is very, very splendid. I must say. 
guys. Psychic. Beautiful. Don't flinch. Okay, do this should be Brute Bonnet coming in. This should be Brute Bonnet. Alright, Bomb Breeder, I never thought you would come out of your Pokeball ever again, but here you are. Nice to be it. Beautiful. Good hit, good hit, good hit. Yeah, Tailwind kill this, then Parting Shot. Yes! Okay. That's so good. That's so good. So I fake out, then Gigaton Hammer. Oh my gosh. This thing's insane. Three turns sleep, dude. I am... I am the luckiest trainer of all time. Oh my gosh. It's too easy. Alright, Fluttermate coming out. I'm Choice Scarf. I should outspeed. Nice. Did she die? Beautiful. That's all you gotta know, man. Hazards are OP. Let's go! You can't do anything. You are toxic. You're a dumb AI. AI playing like an AI. Classic. And that's it. Pokemon Scarlet. Hardcore Nuzlocke. Paldea only. Attempt 1. Is over. After the Citrus Fairy. <laughs> One more fight. <laughs> Too easy. Let's go, baby. With that, the world has been saved and the Nuzlocke has been completed. For my thoughts all about the game, I actually really enjoyed it. From the new Pokemon designs to the new mechanics, open world features, character designs, and music, it was all around a great experience. Even though it has a lot of flaws, this game is truly a step in the right direction. They actually put Ed Sheeran at the end of the game. Oh my gosh. I take it back. This is the worst game I've ever played. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, and have a fantastic day.